Kia ora, I'm Simon Hampton. Welcome in to Kiwis Abroad on Sky Sport, where we take an in-depth look at the Kiwi athletes plying their trade around the world. On today's episode, he was one of the standout performers for the Wellington Phoenix in the past couple of A-League seasons. And earlier this year, Liberato Kakachi was rewarded with a three-year contract at Belgian club St. Trouden. It hasn't all been plain sailing, though, for the Kiwi since making the move to Europe. The coach that brought him over, Kevin Musket, and his assistant, a Kakache family friend, Luch Trani, were sacked and replaced by local Peter Maas. Well, Liberato Kakache joins me now on Kiwis Abroad. Libby, thanks very much for your time. Firstly, how are things going over there in Belgium? Yeah, not too bad. Um, it's, been a, it's been a pretty good transition uh, for me. You know, as, as soon as I arrived, I had an apartment set up. Uh, Till I, till I started playing as well and uh, I've, I've played ever since and uh, I feel like yeah it's been a been a great transition and I'm enjoying it so far. Yeah, St Trouden, I think, I think I've got the pronunciation right there is the town. What's the town like that you're in? It's, it's very different to New Zealand you know, um, it's a quite a old town you know, um, full of a lot of elderly people as well, I'd like to say, um, but yeah I enjoy it you know. It, Gives me time, you know, to, to focus more on my football, you know. My kind of daily routine at the moment is, you know, waking up, going to training, doing a bit of gym, uh, coming back, maybe doing some grocery shopping and then come back home and, you know, that's that's the whole day. So, yeah, that's my daily routine. But I guess when you're trying to crack Europe and, you know, make it over there as a footballer, sort of being completely focused on football is, is probably a good thing? Yeah, of course, I think so. Um, you know, I think it's only been a short period of time since I've been here, but I've, I've definitely learned learned a lot. You know, I've, I've also gone through a coach as well, and um, I'm definitely learning a lot here. You know, the football here is very, very different. You know, sometimes very cutthroat at the same time. Um, but yeah, I'm learning things every day, and yeah, so far it's been a great challenge. Do you enjoy the Belgian lifestyle, and have you picked up uh, the language at all? Yeah, it's it's quite different, you know. Um, in this, in this town, you know, they speak a dialect called Flemish. Yeah. Um, it's way harder to to learn instead of you know just the the Dutch language. Uh, but um, I haven't really tried, you know, because everyone here speaks pretty good English, and you know that's that's all I can ask for, and it's been it's been very uh, easy. I read um, an article earlier, um, just after you joined, that you were living by yourself um, for the first time and having to cook for yourself. How, how's that all going um, in, in your apartment? It's been great so far. Um, you know, my dad and mum have been sending some some recipes and some tips over to me. You know, um, uh, it's been easy. I've been keeping it pretty simple so far. You know, I haven't had the time, you know, to, to try to test myself with the, the occasional, you know, uh, maybe a big uh, pasta dish or things like that. But you know, it's been it's been great. You know, cooking for myself. I've been, you know, cooking healthier as well. You know, sometimes mom's cooking can be a bit uh, a bit too much. But you know, it's it's been good so far, and yeah, I'm enjoying living by myself. Obviously, COVID makes things a bit hard. But uh, you know, are, are there sort of plans or hopes that that your parents and family can come and visit you at some point? Yeah, for sure. They 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 want to come here as soon as possible. But you know, th these times we're living in is very unique and. Um, I've had discussions with them about it. I think hopefully April, you know, they, they tried to come here for Christmas, but obviously it's, it's too risky and it's too much, you know, for them as well. Um, but, you know, thanks to, you know, social media, we can, you know, use messenger call and we can see each other's faces, use FaceTime. So it's, it's been very, very good in that sense. How has COVID affected the league this season? Has has there been any um, changes? I guess um, we've always obviously got no fans at games. You know that that kind of hurts different teams. Um, you know it's it's been tough. Before I left Australia, you know we we're in that situation where we played you know three three times a three times a week. You know that was tough with no fans as well, but. It, it's it's been okay, you know. We get about two two COVID tests a week. Yeah. Maybe, but uh, other than that, you know, it's it's been it's been great. 
been pretty smooth. Yeah, and, and Belgium's sort of um, heading into more lockdowns uh, with, with cases sort of rising there. Is that right? Yeah, I think last month it had uh, the, the biggest amount of cases per capita. Um, it was probably one of the worst in the world. Um, but I think now it's, it's, it's okay, but cases, yeah, once the shops opened up uh, two weeks ago, the cases have risen, so you know, that, that's not good. And I think now Christmas will be a bit restricted, but, you know, obviously I, I got no family here, so it doesn't really affect me as much. I was, I was going to ask you that, because I think you've got a big game against um, Standard Liège on, on Boxing Day, so I, I imagine it's going to be a pretty low-key Christmas for you anyway. Yeah, um, can't, I've got to stay away from, you know, the sweets. Yeah. Um, not like I was going to have them the day before the game, but um, yeah, I've, I've got some, I've met some great teammates as well, you know. Um, I've got some family as well, so I think I might, you know, spend it with them, kind of have some sort of family vibe during Christmas. I think that's one thing I've been missing, and, you know, being a part of that helps me, you know, think about my family, so that'd be great. Nice, nice, yeah. Um, obviously, the, the team hasn't been going so well at the moment, um, at, at the bottom of the ladder at the moment, but still certainly time and, and not you know, far away from, from being able to potentially turn it around and get out of the relegation zone. What is, what's gone wrong, I guess, this season and, and what's the key to turning things around? I think it's the, I think it's the little details, you know. Um, I think we've been... Ever since we won against Standard Liège, um, there's been a, a, a positive turn with the club. You know, we've been playing much better. We've been, you know, in the game. Um, I think it's just that that final ball and that, that uh, the final, you know, defending situation that we've got to be better at. You know, teams are punishing us, and you look at us. We're not punishing teams when they make mistakes. So uh, I think, you know, with this new coach, I think he's very, you know, very strict, very hard on us. I think. It'll be a, a very positive uh, transition with the team, I think, in the next uh, couple of weeks. So um, I don't think we have to, to worry too much. You know, the, the ladder is very uh, tight, if you can see it. So You, you t- touched on the coaches and Kevin Musket and, and, and Luch Trani, his assistant, getting <laughs> sacked midway through the season. Um, when they were, I think, a big part of, of bringing you over to Belgium, has, how challenging has that been? Yeah, that's been it's been quite tough, you know. Um, having a coach that brought you, uh, that knows you as well. Um, you know, when I heard the news that he was he was getting sacked, it, it was tough. Um, I didn't know what this coach would think of me. You know, he probably wouldn't know what I'm like. But you know, the the first two weeks he's been here, you know, he's, uh, he's spoken a lot to me. You know, he he watches been watching the games I've been playing, and you know, he he played me as well in his first game in charge last weekend. So. Um, he still sees me in the picture, and um, I've been playing well, and I just got to continue to play well, and there won't be uh, any doubts of me not playing. Yeah, what what is he like? What sort of coach is he, and how does he differ from uh, Kevin Musket? Um, he's a much more you know strict firm, loves to shout, very passionate coach. You know, when he sees something he doesn't like, you know, he he'll, he'll tell tell it to you honestly. Um, you know, Kevin was a you know much more relaxed kind of coach you know um he was a bit more about you know giving you belief and making you feel like you're you know you're on top of the world so at the same time that was that was important to as a player you know to to receive a a lot of positivity and belief from your coach but at the same time you know with this new coach he's he's the opposite like i said before he's gonna he's gonna be honest with you and you know, I've, I've had that in the past with uh, previous Phoenix coaches. Uh, I'm definitely used to it, and you know, that I think that will help me grow as a footballer. When you have a new coach, obviously, you want to sort of, you know, we touched on this just earlier. You want to sort of know know where you stand in the picture. He's playing you, but have have you had a sort of chat about where you do fit in and 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 what he likes about you um, as a player? Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, he uh, he sort of touches my touches of of me as a player in the games before and um you know he knows uh he, he cracked a little joke at me today you know um, about rugby being the number one uh, sport in New Zealand but uh yeah he's definitely he's definitely had many chats with me and 
he's definitely telling me what I need to improve on, and you know that's important in a, in a young footballer. What has been the biggest challenge about moving to Europe? Uh, for me, I think you know it's that transition into European football, mm. especially in Belgium. You know, it's it's very quick. Um, teams lo- love to press you very, very high as well, and I think that's been the biggest transition. Yeah, because coming from Australia and New Zealand, you know, it's uh, the tempo is much slower, and the I'd say the quality is not as not as good, obviously. Yeah. In Belgium, so you know that that's been the biggest. I think the biggest transition for me was that. Yeah. So, so have you had to adapt your game much um, coming over there? Yeah, I think so. Um, one thing that's stood out for me in Australia was my my physicality and my athleticism. And coming here, you know, there's a lot of people like me, so uh, I've had to change my game. You know, be a bit more smarter with how I play. Um, but at the same time, you know, um, stick to what you're good at as well. It's one thing uh, I've got to got to do in my game, and just have the belief. You know, it's it's hard being a New Zealander. You know, coming from from New Zealand, but you know, for me, it's there's no there's no real no real gap between. New Zealand footballers and the, and the people here. So as long as you work hard and believe in, in what you're good at, you should be fine. I guess when you're trying to adapt, um, being in a position to play every week is really important. And I know there were, it was reported that some bigger clubs um, were looking at you when you're at the Phoenix, but coming mm. to a club where you know you're playing every week must really help um, adapting to the new league. Yeah, definitely. I think one of the most important things of a young footballer is to play. And that's that's one thing that I'm doing here is, you know, I'm playing every week and that's very important. You know, every time I play, my value goes up. You know, people are people are watching me here. So um, I think that's important as a young footballer as well. And uh, I think, you know, you've got to be smart with your with your steps, your next steps in life as a footballer. You know, if you're for me, I chose I chose this club because I want to play and uh, I want to use this as a platform to, to grow as a young footballer. And, yeah, that's what I've chosen. How does it compare to the A-League, uh, the Belgian Pro League, in terms of standard? Um, I'd say the, the quality of players is, is much better here. You know, um, I've noticed that you make the mistake, they'll punish you. Um, obviously, the physicality is, a, is one thing as well. You know, <clears throat> in the standard Liège game, I don't think, I don't think people knew, but I, I broke my nose. At uh, just before half time. Really? Um, yep. And I played on as well. And <laughs> Did you just, just get, just get broken back into place um, at half time and, and out you went again? <laughs> I, wish it, I wish it was that easy. But, yeah. Um, no, I just had to stuff some tissues up my nose and you know, get on with it. But yeah, I'd say physicality, the, the speed of the game, kind of everything's uh, just a bit much, a bit quicker here. Yeah. Um, did you speak to any other Kiwis about um, that are over in Europe about settling in and um, some of the challenges about moving to Europe? Yeah, definitely. Like uh, I spoke to Sapri. You know, I was close with him before he left the Phoenix and asked him what it was like. You know, what it was like living by yourself. What it's like uh, that transition into Europe as well. Um, he he as well as a friend gave me a lot of belief. You know, told me told me I'll be fine. You know, just. Like I said before, stick to what you're good at, and um, and that, that's one thing I've been doing, and yeah, it's, it's helped me a lot. You talked about using um, this team as a as a platform, and, and and this first move as a as a platform. You've got a three year contract there. Do you think how far ahead do you think, and and do you set yourself goals of when when you might want to um, move on to bigger clubs or or anything like that? You know, f- football is a, a funny game. Things can change very quickly. You know. Um, I've seen, you know, I've seen previous players at this club, you know, move on very quickly, you know, just from maybe, you know, from a handful of games playing well. Um, depends how, how how you play, how how ready you are as well, you know, and often can come through and just like that after you playing uh, a handful of, of games. But I think, you know, as a footballer, you got to know when, when to take that next step as well, you know. Um, you can look at yourself and be like, oh, I don't think this club is right for me. I think I might need one more year here in Belgium, you know, just to to make sure you know, everything's going smoothly. So 
yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens in the in the future. You know, the January transfer window is coming up as well, and you know anything can happen. But I've just, I've just got to you know work hard. Yeah. Play every week, and you know play well, and that's all you can ask for. Do you set sights and, and goals, I guess, for you know European leagues that you'd love to play in? I know you've got Italian heritage, so is there a sort of dream to play in Serie A one day? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think scouts looking at me already knows that I've, I've got that Italian heritage and that Italian passport, so it makes things a lot easier. Um, but yeah, that would be a, a great next step, obviously, would be into Serie A. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, Things things would be very tough over there. Yeah, um, will you be following the Phoenix this year? Obviously, their their campaign's about to get underway, based out of Australia, so it'll be another another tough season. Um, not being able to play in Wellington at least immediately until a Trans Tasman mm. bubble might get set up. But will you be following them and, and keeping in contact with them? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think I've been keeping in contact with some players as well, and I think now it's it's eleven days till the till the first game kicks off in the league. So you know. I've been keeping in contact with players and they seem very positive about the season ahead. And, you know, Phoenix was my uh, my boyhood club, so definitely I'll be following them and I wish them all, all the best. And have you had a chance to speak to Danny Hay about what uh, things might look like for the national team in 2021? Obviously, getting closer to uh, the World Cup in 2022, so there'll be some qualifying um, to uh, to go through. But have you, have you had a chance to, to speak much with Danny Hay? Yeah, definitely. He he calls me uh, every two weeks or so, you know, to see how I am. Um, I think that's a, that's important, you know, to keep in contact with the national team coach. And you know, he's he's definitely made it aware of of what's what's ahead, and he's made it clear, you know, what needs to happen as well. And I think it's um, I think we had a Zoom call as well as a team, you know, to discuss what's what's happening, and we all know as a team what our our, our goal is for our these next two years and um, I think playing in playing in Europe is is great for me you know for the for the national team as well and certainly I mean you know you look longer longer term and, and the chance to play at a World Cup must be um, a special obviously a, a real dream for you um, so you must be excited at the chance to, to potentially be a part of something like that yeah definitely um, the World Cup is definitely a dream of mine um, to play in it would be would be a great, it would be a phenomenal experience. Um, so I think that's that's one uh, short-term goal I'm looking at. Um, so I think that, that that would be great as a, as a country, and it would do a lot for, for the for the football nation. All right, mate. Thanks very much for coming on. Um, really appreciate your time, and, and all the best for the rest of the season. We'll be following closely. No worries. Appreciate it. Thank you. Liberato Kakachi there. Well, when you think of Sapreet Singh uh, doing well in Germany, Ryan Thomas in the Netherlands, Chris Wood is, of course, crushing it at Burnley in the English Premier League. There's plenty of exciting Kiwi footballing talent based out of Europe. And you can catch plenty more football discussion on the Kiwi Football Fix on Sky Sport. Check your listings for times for that show. All right, that wraps up this episode of Kiwis Abroad. And sad to say, the final episode for 2020, although not so sad to see the back of 2020 itself. Looking forward to a new year in 2021. I'll be back with more Kiwis Abroad episodes in January. Until then, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from a very cold and today a little bit snowy New York. Enjoy your summer holiday, New Zealand. I am looking on with a tremendous amount of envy. See you in a few weeks.